Hello everybody and welcome to my video on file and directory information uh, which is part of my series on Windows programming with C Sharp. Now this part uh, of the series is all about working with uh, files, writing to files, reading from files and things like that. Uh, however, streaming information to files and reading information from files is only a very small part of working with files uh, in, in a program. Basically, uh, if we try to read from a file that doesn't exist or write to a file that doesn't exist, we can crash our program. Uh, if we attempt to access or delete or modify files that aren't there or named differently or, or are write protected, um, again, we're going to have problems with our program. So we need some way of, of ascertaining whether or not uh, files are the way they should be you know, before we start working with them. All right, and luckily for us, there are uh, a few classes built into uh, Windows Pro or C -sharp .net, which we use in Windows programming, that, that assist us with this. And the four classes specifically that we're gonna use are file, file info, directory, and directory info. Uh, and we use these to find uh, the specifics of what we wanna do. So what I'm going to work with a lot here is with the C drive, just so I can illustrate a few points. So I have my C drive, uh, Windows Explorer open. I'll just show you here. Uh, you'll notice there's no folder named test uh, because we're going to uh, programmatically create one. So with my form selected, I'm going to come to the toolbox. I'm going to add a button, and I'm going to add a text box. All right, and that text box we will rename uh, txt path, and the button I don't really care about. The button I'll just make it say click me okay great all right so what I want to do is I want to allow the user to type in a path all right into this box here and have the program either determine if that directory we're working with directories to begin with not files yet determine if that directory exists if it does let you know if it doesn't create it okay so I'm gonna double click on the click me button here and before we work with anything with files, we need to import a new library. We need to come up here to the top and type in using system.io. That stands for input output. Just basically saying, hey, we're working with some stuff that's not part of our standard collection. All right. Now that we have that, we have access to a bunch of different, basically a bunch of different classes and, and things like that that we can use to work with our files. So like I said, when I click that button, I want to say, hey, does this directory exist? If it does, let the user know. If it doesn't, create it. So I'm going to say if, and I'm going to say directory. All right, directory is a class, but we're not going to create an object of it. We're going to use it statically. All right, so if directory dot exists, all right, and we're going to pass in uh, txt path dot text. So if the directory exists, then we're going to say message box dot show, and we'll just simply say exists. All right. Uh, so that's easy enough. We see that if the, the directory, if this directory exists, whatever the user types in here, uh, then we say, hey, that exists. Else, we're going to create it. Directory dot create directory. All right. And we will say txt path dot text. So if it doesn't exist, we're going to make it. That's simple enough. And we'll look at more about what directory can do here in a second. But uh, for now, we're just going to look at this code here real quick. So we're just saying, hey, if it exists, we're good. If it doesn't, we're going to make one. OK? And uh, we'll see that work here in a second. So I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to type in c colon forward slash, uh, or I guess that's a backslash, c colon backslash test. Now, I can't just type in test, all right? The reason being is this is set up to work with an absolute path, not a relative path. That's very important to understand when working with files. An absolute path is a path starting at the root and working all the way across. So let's say I have like Visual Studio installed, right? That install directory might be C colon backslash program files backslash Microsoft backslash Visual Studio 10 backslash you see that's the absolute path that's the entire path from root to get where you're at all right if you're used to Linux you're also all too familiar with root um, and so an absolute path is the full path name now a relative path let's say I have my program uh, in my documents 
All right, relative path, I, I could just say test, and it will look in the folder of the program. That's relative. It's relative to the program. An absolute path, it doesn't matter where you are on the computer. Right? It doesn't matter what directory you're in or anything. It can find that file. A relative path is reliant on your file and your program being in the same place every time you run it. So if I create a, a, a program with an absolute path and I move the program, it still works. If I create it with a relative path and I move the program, it stops working because the relative path doesn't work anymore. So uh, we're dealing with absolute paths. All right. So this is C colon backslash test. All right. And I'll bring this over here and we will go ahead and hit click me. And notice I didn't say I see that it existed. Instead, it created it. All right. It's empty, but it created it nonetheless. I'll click it again. Oh, hey, now it exists. We have it. Perfect. Okay, that's that's fantastic. So that works. All right, I'll close this here, and I'll get rid of test. We'll bring it back soon enough. Okay. So, um, so that's just some of the really cool stuff we can do with the directory. I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of this code, and we're gonna just hit the dot down here. We can see uh, we can delete directories, we can create direct directories, we can test if they exist, we can tell whether or not we have access to them, when they were created, uh, we can get the files that are inside of it, so which is something we'll do here in a bit. Um, get the number of logical drives, get the parent of a directory, move a directory. So uh, a lot of really powerful things we can do in there. Directory info is basically, uh, while directory gives us tools to evaluate a bunch of different directories, directory info is an encode representation of a single directory with all of the information about that directory. So we're not going to use that right now. Uh, we will use file info and you'll kind of get the idea of how it works. Okay. So now what I want to say, okay, we're good with that. I want to do the same thing with a file. I want to say, hey, if a file exists, let the user know. If it doesn't exist, create it. Okay, and we're going to see that that's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to say if file dot exists, all right, and then I'll type in txt path dot text. All right, so if the file exists, uh, message box dot show uh, exists. Else file dot create txt path dot text. All right, so so far so good. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And again, I'm going to type in c colon backslash test. This time I want to create a file called, te called test, all right, not a directory. Now watch what happens when I click this. My program crashes. That's right. It says access to the path C uh, colon backslash test is denied. Uh, the reason it's denied is because we can't create files directly in the C drive. All right, we can create folders here. We can't create files here. That's a security feature of uh, Windows. I don't know if XP had it, I don't remember, but I know Vista in Windows 7 doesn't let you write files specifically to the C drive. You can only create folders. All right, so first off, that's unfortunate. Um, now, that's not something we can fix with code. That's Windows saying you cannot do this. All right, that's fine. Windows has a limitation. Okay, we won't do that. Let's instead put it in a directory. So I'll run it again. And I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to do C colon backslash test, backslash test. So it will be the file test in the directory test. Okay, that's simple enough. Click me. And we crash again. This time, could not find a part of the path. This folder test does not exist. So it's saying, hey, we can't look for a file in a path that doesn't exist. All right. So again, our program crashes. So we need to do a little bit to make our program a little bit more robust. Um, the first thing you might be thinking is, hey, we could just throw it all in a try catch block and say the V. Um, and yeah, we, we could do that, but that's that's boring. That's that's old parts. We're looking at new stuff now. Um, ultimately, when you work with files, always put everything in a try catch block. That's just that's just a rule because things can go wrong. Always try catch block. But for now, let's look at figuring it out from a, a logical standpoint instead of just throwing in our throwing an error and saying I give up. All right. So what we want to do is we want to say, okay, the file doesn't exist already. All right, that's why we're in this else. So I want to say, hey, let me make sure the directory exists first. All right, let me, let me make sure we can get there. 
All right, if the directory doesn't exist, maybe we need to make the directory before making the file. All right, so I might say if directory dot exists, but here comes a little bit of trouble. All right, I don't want to create a folder test inside the folder test on the C drive. I want to create a file test inside the folder test. So how do I find the path to just the folder? All right, um, for instance, I'll just comment this out here for a second so it'll run. If I do C colon backslash test slash test, I only want this part to see if that folder exists. I don't. I want to get rid of this and this, you know, in this uh, backslash. I don't want those there. So how how do I get? Do I have to parse this text box? Luckily, we don't. Luckily, we can pull the file info of a file that doesn't even exist. All right, to check its directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say. Uh, file info, all right. File info is a encode representation of an actual file, even if it doesn't exist, and of which we can pull a bunch of information from. So I'm gonna do file info, and I'll just call it file equals new file info, and that file info will be txtpath.txt, all right. And now I'm gonna say if the directory exists of file dot directory name. So it's going to truncate the file name in that backslash off for us. All right. So if that exists, all right, then we're just going to create the file. Okay. Um, and actually, you know what? We can simplify our code here. So I'm just going to move this down here. We're just going to say, hey, if it doesn't exist, create it. Directory dot create directory at file dot directory name. And once that has been created, now we can successfully create the file. Okay, so we're just saying, hey, let's let's create an encode representation of the file. Let's pull the directory name of that file, see if it exists. If it doesn't make it, then make the file. All right, and we'll run it. And I'll bring it down here, and I'll bring this right next to it. And now I'm going to do c colon slash test slash test. All right, and I'll hit click me. And we will see that the test folder gets created, and inside it is this file test. Now, it has no extension. Windows doesn't even know how to open it. Windows is going to say, hey, what is this? How do you want to open this? Uh, because it doesn't have, like, a .txt. We can make it with a .txt simple enough, just .txt. And I hit it, and I test, and hey, there it is. Now it's a text file. I click it again. It says, oh, hey, that exists. Cool. All right. That is awesome. So now what we can do is we can look at uh, some more uses for these different directory and file info and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and begin cleaning up our code. So I'm just going to grab basically this entire if statement. We'll get rid of that. And what I want to do now is I want to get rid of oh, – here, let me delete this test. What I want to do is I want to, I want to um, list every uh, – basically every file – within a directory that I specify, okay? So I'm gonna come over here to my form, and I'm gonna expand it a little bit. I'll bring my button down here, my text box down here. Um, actually, you know what? Okay, I'll leave the text box, but we're not gonna use it for the first iteration. I wanna show you something else. So, and we're gonna bring a list box over. So there's my list box. Hey, list box, how you doing? Okay, um, so that's all well and good. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna iterate through uh, a directory all right, and I want to pull all the files. Okay, so I'm simply going to say uh, string my files equals directory dot get files. That's going to return back uh, basically uh, an array of strings. Okay, uh, of, of paths. Okay, to all the files inside, and we're going to use that to create files that we're going to be able to test the info of. So I'm going to say get files, and here I have to specify my path. So in the next time we run this, we're going to do this with the text box, but for now, I'm going to hard code it because I want to show you how to hard code a path. All right, so let's say I want my Windows directory. Okay, I want C colon backslash Windows. All right, here's the problem. The backslash character is a formatted character in C-sharp. It, it means you're trying to do something inside this string. 
we can't just have a backslash. You'll see that it even leaves a red line because it doesn't recognize backslash W as an escape sequence. All right. So if you need a backslash in C sharp, you have to double it, double backslash. So C double backslash Windows. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for each. All right. String file name in my files. File info file equals a new file info. Oops. All right. File name. So we're going to create an encode representation of all the files in there. And then we're simply going to say listbox1.items.add. And we will pass in file dot name um, and there's other things we can do with this um, it's much more powerful than simply uh, saying the name because we kind of already can get the name but uh, the cool thing about the name is it truncates off the other bits so it, it truncates off the C colon backslash windows backslash and just gives us the file name uh, but what I want to do is I'm also going to do file dot and if I but when I hit file dot I can see all the things we can we can find um, let's say I want to find um, well, is read only. Here we go. Is read only will tell me if I if it's a read only type file that I can poten potentially use. All right. So what we've done here is we've gotten an array of strings of all the files in the Windows directory. Uh, I'm iterating through that array of files. I'm creating a file info class of that file, and I'm outputting its name and whether or not it's read only. All right. So I'll run it. And I'll hit click me. And here are all the files inside the, the Windows directory. All right. And we can see false, false, false. These aren't read only. Okay. So here's the files and whether or not they're read only. I exp oh, here's one. We can't modify the manifest. It is read only. See, right there. True. All right. So if I were to iterate through and only modify the files that I was allowed to modify, I can quickly test that. So, and we can find the extensions and things like that. All right. So I told you we'd do this once with the txt path there um, which we will do so i'll run it again just to show you um, let me find a folder that's worth looking into uh, i'm just i'm perusing my uh, uh these are all boring we'll just do windows again um i don't have any folders with with a lot of files most of them just have subfolders and i don't really feel like digging deep so we'll do c colon backslash windows notice we don't have to do the double backslash here because this is inside of a text box it's fine it's only when we hard code something all right and i click me and then there's all this information all right uh reading it from the text box so okay so that's cool all right so that's pretty much going to wrap up this video here. Uh, some of the things I showed you. I showed you uh, the, the directory, uh, how to pull directory information, uh, how to get file information, how to use the file info class. I talked about absolute versus relative pathing. I talked about some of the errors you might encounter with trying to create a file if a folder doesn't exist, or if you're trying to create it on the C drive. I also showed you how to hard code a path, all right, using the two slashes instead of one, and how to type absolute paths into text boxes, which might become uh, pretty important in later examples. All right, so that will finalize uh, this video here. In the next video, we're going to talk about uh, writing to files.